Hi guys, as you see here, I'm gonna talk about the spinal cord. So I'll give you an overview about the spinal cord, when it can start, where it can finish, where it is, and how spinal nerves coming out of the vertebral column. So I'll use this model and I'll use this draw. And I also, I'm gonna use this vertebral column to show you about the details of the spinal cord as an intro. So, uh, as you know, nervous system, it splits into two central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, or CNS stands for central nervous system, and PNS stands for peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system contains brain and spinal cord. So as you see in this uh, drawing, here is the skull. Within this skull, we have brain. So this part is known as the brain. The red one is the small brain or cerebellum. The other name of the brain is cerebrum. And down here, this part is the brain stem that I showed you some videos about the brain stem. So if you look at here precisely, here we have the foramen magnum. This area is the phrenic magnum. So down here we have the spinal cord. So spinal cord is within the vertebral column. So it starts at the level of the foramen magnum, foramen magnum, and it runs all the way down and finishes at the level of the lumbar vertebra 2, L2, or in some individuals L1, in kids in L3. So it's at the level of the L2 it finishes. So as you see here, the spinal cord is shorter than the vertebral column. So this is the vertebral column. It starts here at the level of the foramen magnum and runs all the way down to the, to the pelvis, to the pelvic floor. So I'm going to show you this model. If you look at here closely, this is the brain first part of the CNS and it is within the skull and here is known as the spinal cord so spinal cord is the second part of the CNS it starts at the level of the foramen magnum and is it finishes here at the level of the lumbar vertebra approximately at the level of the lumbar vertebra 2 so this is the CNS what is the PNS? Think about it. How CNS communicates with the rest of the body. How they are supplying the muscles and the viscera and the ski. They are communicating with the rest of the body via PNS. So the PNS contains cranial nerves. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Please watch my video about the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And we also have spinal nerves. Spinal nerve. We have 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So if you look at again this drawing, you can see the spinal cord within the vertebral column. You can also see how 31 pairs of spinal nerves coming out of the vertebral column. They are exiting the vertebral column to communicate with our body, to supply the muscles and the skin. Okay? So the cranial nerves, they're mainly supplying the head and the scalp, but the spinal nerve, 31 pairs of spinal nerves are supplying the rest of the body trunk, upper limb, lower limb, and some part of the neck. So this is just an overview. I'm not going to go to the details. First of all, I'll show you the 
vertebral column. So this is the vertebral column. As you see here, this is the occipital bone part of the uh, skull. And down here we have some vertebra. They are known as the vertebra. How many vertebra we have here? We have cervical vertebra, seven cervical vertebra. It is called C1, C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have seven cervical vertebra. And then we have 12 thoracic vertebra. It's shown by the T, the first letter of the thoracic, T1 to T12. And then down here we have five lumbar vertebra. You see here we have L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is the T12. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And down here we have this single bone. In adult it is single bone. It's called sacrum. And finally we have the single bone coccyx. Actually this sacrum during the intrauterine life in fetus, it's comprised of five sacral vertebra, and then they fuse together to make a single bone. And coccyx as well, it's, it contains four coccygeal bones and they are fusing together to make the coccyx. So how many vertebra we have? Seven cervical, 12 thoracic, seven plus 12 is 19. And five lumbar is 24, one sacrum, 25, and one coccyx, 26 uh, vertebrae we have in adults. So if you look at carefully, I'm going to show you, this is the body of the vertebra. So the body of the vertebra faces anteriorly, and this is the spinous process of the vertebra and spinous process of the vertebra faces posteriorly. In between the vertebra, when they are articulating each other, in between them, there is a foramen. It's called intervertebral foramen. You see how intervertebral, so how the spinal nerves coming out of this intervertebral foramen. Inter means between. Between two vertebrae, we have one foramen. So you can see how the spinal nerves coming out of these intervertebral foramen. If you look at from the superior view, there is a vertebral foramen. When they are articulating each other, they make vertebral canal. So within the vertebral canal, we have a spinal cord. Keep in mind, spinal cord houses by the vertebral canal and spinal nerves exiting the vertebral canal through the intervertebral foramina. So, yes, this is the spinal cord within the vertebral canal. Now I'm going to show you which how many spinal segments we have. You know, as I mentioned earlier, it starts at the level of the foramen magnum. Magnum is, it finishes at the level of the L2. So this is the shorter than the vertebral column. So if you look at carefully, we have eight cervical nerves, but seven vertebral, cervical vertebra. So don't get confused, the spinal nerves with the vertebral body. So look at here, the C1 nerve is coming out just above the C1 vertebra. C1 nerve coming out just above the C1 vertebra. And all first seven cervical nerves coming out of just the same name vertebra. The drink seven up reminds me of these first seven cervical vertebra. They are coming out of the cervical spine, just above the same name vertebra. And then 
we have C8 nerve. C8 nerve is coming out of the spinal canal, just the spinal cord, just below the C7, and T1 nerve below the T1 vertebra, T2 below. So rest of the spinal nerves coming out of the uh, vertebral column just below the same name vertebra, okay? So this formula is changed by the C8. So how many cervical nerves we have? We have eight cervical nerves. Then we have 12 thoracic nerves. Eight plus 12 would be 20. And then we have five lumbar vertebra. Sorry, so yes, five lumbar vertebra and five lumbar nerves. And then we have sacral nerve, S1, S2, 3, 4, and 5. And finally, we have one coccygeal. So 8 plus 12 is 20. 5 lumbar, 5 sacral is 30. And one coccygeal is 31. So we have 31 spinal nerves. Totally, first cervical spinal nerves coming out of the vertebral column, just above the, the same name vertebra. C8 changes the formula. C8 coming out of the vertebral column just below the C7, and the rest of them coming out of the vertebral column just below the same name vertebra. T1 below the T2, T1 below the T1, T2 nerve below the T2 vertebra. So what will happen? As I mentioned earlier, the spinal cord finishes at the level of the L2, but we still have lumbar nerve, sacral nerve, and coccygeal nerve. They need to descend through the vertebral column to get into the same name vertebra and then exit the vertebral column just below the same name vertebra. So below the L2, we have some lumbar nerves, sacral nerve, and coccygeal nerve. Totally, they, are, they look like the horse's tail. In anatomy, the horse's tail is known as the coda equina. Coda equina. Coda means tail, equine means horse. So it looks like a horse's tail here. And there are some enlargements here. Here we have the cervical enlargement. In this cervical segment, we have cervical enlargement. So what is this? Cervical enlarge. Meant. And here we have in the lumbar segment, we have lumbar enlargement. So, you know, within the spinal cord, I'll discuss it in a next video, we have some nerves, we have some neurons. So, these neurons supplying the muscles and the skin. So, here we have the upper limb. Some nerves coming out of the cervical segment and supplying the muscles of the upper limb. And some nerves coming out of the lumbar segment and supplying the muscles and the skin of the lower limb. So we have more neurons in these segments to supplying the upper limb. And it gets huge. And it's called cervical enlargement. And here we have lumbar enlargement for the lower limb muscles and skin. And if you look at here closely, the lower end of the spinal cord has a conus shape, which is known as the conus medullaris. So it's called the conus medullaris. The conus shape end of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris. So I can show you on this model, if you look at it closely, 
Here is the spinal cord. The distal end of the spinal cord has a conus shape. It is called the conus medullaris. And you can see this is the cervical segment, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and co coccygeal part is the end of the spinal cord. You can also see how the spinal nerves coming out of the vertebral column through this intervertebral foramina. Thank you.